The pandemic has elevated health data and its uses beyond imagining, with governments around the world looking to track and trace what is happening in their own backyards. Here in the UAE, the response to the pandemic has been hailed as world leading. And one of the pillars of that success has been health data and technology and how they have been used here to fight the pandemic. But it's a field that promises much improvement in healthcare systems far beyond the pandemic. So today I'm delighted to be joined by Atif Albreki, the CEO of Abu Dhabi Health Data Services to unpack what this means. Atif, welcome to AB Talks. Thank you, thanks Scott. So this is a massive area, um, which has become all encompassing for governments around the world. I think probably just give our viewers an overview of the work you do at Malafi. How do you help exchange information and what are the benefits of that? To really understand Malafi, we just need to go back maybe around 15 years ago. Yeah. Uh, Abu Dhabi around 2004 went through a major healthcare reform where um, uh, insurance or health insurance was introduced. It mm. was a mandatory universal participation. Uh, what the government also then did uh, is established uh, a company called Saha to manage and run all the government-owned healthcare facilities. And they, they encouraged the private sector to play a bigger role in providing care. So that's where like the likes of MediClinic, uh, yeah. VPS, you know, Cleveland Clinic, started providing care and really give uh, patients more access to care. And that played a key role in terms of enhancing the quality of care in, in Abu Dhabi. But then it created also more fragmentation, uh, you know, because it's the same patient who is moving across all those facilities. Uh, all the government facilities in Saha were connected through one unified medical record, through one electronic medical record system. Mm -hmm. But the challenge then was, you know, the same patient moves to the private, uh, these systems are not interlinked. It created a lot of care coordination challenges. Uh, it also resulted in overutilization of uh, unnecessary repetition of tests. Uh, so maybe around four years ago, the, the idea of establishing a platform that will facilitate the exchange of health information across the Emirates uh, came into the, you know, the, the discussions with the Department of Health, which is today regulating the healthcare sector in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. And in 2017, we started working on uh, defining a, a business case for building uh, such a platform, looking at, you know, how can this platform uh, be operated? What's the, tech, the best te technology architecture that should be, should, should be put in place? Uh, what's the business model? You know, how are different stakeholders are going to benefit from such platform? Uh, and what we did, basically, we built um, a central uh, clinical data repository that connects with all the electronic medical record systems across all the facilities in Abu Dhabi. Uh, for every resident, you know, uh, regardless of where that patient moves uh, across the healthcare facilities, all his or her data is going to be available in this central clinical data repository. And then we give easy access to the healthcare providers uh, to uh, query and to look at the previous uh, medical record of that patient whenever that visit happens. That seems like a daunting task. It seems like a massive task. How on earth have you approached that project to take all that? I mean, how many people are we talking about? We're talking a significant number of records there. How on earth have you done that? Yeah, so we're talking about around 2,000 healthcare facilities, uh, you know, for a population of around 3 million. Yeah. Um, and uh, really, it, it starts with, with proper planning at the beginning. So we spent a lot of time, to be honest, putting a business case and plan and, and, and discuss with the different stakeholders, yeah. engaging, you know, be, being it the healthcare providers in the Emirates, uh, the, the regulator played a key role in terms of putting a very clear policy uh, with, um, with, with a timeline that provides the sense of urgency, you know, in terms of connecting to Malafi. Uh, so they did not leave just an, an open timeline. There was the word deadlines, uh, you know, put in place by the regulator. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that creates the sense of urgency for everyone to connect. And then really the pandemic uh, showed the value of this, this platform. And really it made the, the program accelerate. And for the different stakeholders, being it the healthcare providers, okay. the public health department, the different stakeholders in, in the healthcare sector, to really see the value and really to get engaged more in terms of ensuring that we deliver this platform fast, we start seeing the value and the outcomes of such platform. Well, I mean... 
to me, it makes sense uh, when you look at you know, coronavirus and what happened in 2020. But what have been those value, you know, that value that you've seen, um, both in terms of the patient perhaps experience accessing a healthcare system and those providers who have now signed up and joined in the Malafi project? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the government in the UAE and in Abu Dhabi, you know, they, they decided to go with the, with the strategy of maximizing uh, the, the number of tests that is happening for the population. Yeah. So with that mass amount of uh, PCR tests that were happening, you know, that created also reporting challenges, right, to the Department of Health or the Public Health Department. And also it created challenges in terms of monitoring the spread of the disease. Mm -hmm. So if we depend on manual reporting, which was the process, you know, before having a system like uh, uh, Malafi, uh, it was creating a lot of overhead for the different stakeholders, being it the providers who have to report or even the public health department who need to, you know, uh, receive those reports and then do the contact tracing and looking at the spread of the disease. Malafi helped in playing a role in automating this process. Uh, it was challenging. I mean, uh, in the early months of the pandemic, you know, getting all the labs connected uh, was a challenging experience. You know, the labs had different competing priorities. Then on top of that, they had to connect, you know, their uh, lab information systems to, to Malefi. So uh, it was challenging for the different stakeholders. But then what it, what it really played a role in is that, it, you know, once we connected all these labs, we were able to get insights about the, you know, the spread of the diseases, uh, you know, the infectious rate uh, across the community. And that re- then played a key role in terms of early prevention measures that were been taken to contain the spread of the disease across the different areas. It played a key role in enhancing the, you know, the, the coordination and the communication between the different stakeholders and managing the pandemic. Uh, at, at later stage, when, we, you know, when, when, when an- antibody tests and vaccination programs uh, uh, started, we were able to, to link you know, the PCR tests with, with people who are getting vaccinated and then link them with also the medical record, um, you know, of the patient uh, and to really provide different insights uh, for the public health department who are really playing a key role in coordinating the efforts of the, everyone in the, in, in the healthcare sector. So that was the, the real value of having such a platform. I mean, I can't imagine how you could have tackled that with an old-fashioned manual system. I mean, was it, it was just good foresight and planning that as this pandemic came, you had this you had this foundation of a system that you could actually turn on and, and attract people into. Yeah, I think you know. W- to be honest, we were lucky by having the foundation yeah. when you know, and so we were able to really utilize this asset to to play a key role in the in the pandemic response. You know, the 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 manual reporting is a great system. We're not saying it's a, but to manage such a pandemic, having you know a, a manual surveillance is, is going to create a lot of challenges. Yeah. Now, within all of that, I mean, AI is prevalent in all of our lives. Um, how have you integrated artificial intelligence into this process? Because I imagine this isn't just people tapping on computers all the time. There's, there's, there's programming and algorithms at work here as well. Yeah. So that was also something that we planned on from the beginning because right. a health information exchange has what we can say, you know, uh, different options or different uh, uh, architecture design that you can deploy. So we... We selected uh, an architecture design that will enable us to do predictive analytics in the future and to be able to get insights from the data that we have. So uh, in 2020, one of the key projects that we, we, we adopted was to collect two years of historical medical record of patients, mm-hmm. put, the, put it into a, mach- a machine learning algorithm that can then uh, you know, predict the potential diseases or people who are at high risk across the population for the next 12 months. Wow. So we, we, we did a, a proof of concept uh, last year to, to take a specific uh, segment of the population, uh, apply machine learning to two years of their historical data record, and to then uh, look at uh, you know, the, the potential um, uh, risk of certain population of specific diseases. And uh, this year, we're working with the, the non-communicable department at the Department of Health to really operationalize the insights that we're getting from, from these, uh, from, you know, from from those insights in terms of doing uh, more uh, population health programs, uh, you know, uh, coordinating care for people who are at high risk of certain conditions. Uh, And that's really the power of having such a platform. When you are able to collect uh, such mass data of uh, medical records, you can always apply AI and machine learning to really drive insights that can predict uh, the future so that you can plan better and do more 
uh, proactive and preventative programs. So if I'm in Abu Dhabi, your algorithms are going to be looking at my medical records and going, Scott, you need to lose weight, you need to do some exercise, otherwise you're at risk of A, B, C, D conditions. So, so we, we give high level population health insights to the Department of Health. At this stage, we don't provide insights directly to the, to the, to the patient. I need them. Yeah, I mean, it's because, uh, you know, we, we still don't have a, a, a patient portal or a channel that's going to provide that level of access to the patient. That's something that's being studied for to be implemented wow. in the future. Yeah. Uh, but at this stage, we're providing it for the public so the health department. Can prioritize where it. Uh, exactly, and then we'll be we're going to be providing specific insights for the uh, care providers uh, within our clinical portal. You know, to give them insights about the potential high risk patients, so that that can be a key aspect when they're, uh, you know, providing care and uh, something that can help them in their um, uh, decision support. You were talking earlier there about the business case. Just talk to me a little bit because you had a little bit of, not opposition, but you had different players with different systems and different priorities. And you've managed to harmonize that. And, and perhaps coronavirus has been the thing that has accelerated that cooperation. Now that you're there, what is the business case for, for, the, for the providers? Well, how does this make their lives better? Um, how does it, does it improve revenue? Does it improve operational efficiency? And also, what's the benefit for the patients, you know, the ultimate end user, the ultimate customer? Yeah. So, you know, for the providers, uh, such a platform, it, it enhances their operational efficiency. You know, usually when you, as, a, as a caregiver, when you see a patient, you have limited time. Yeah. Uh, the more summarized information you can get, it can help you in providing the right, the right level of diagnosis and decision, uh, you know, in providing care to that patient. So what we do in Malefi is that we consolidate that information. So instead of depending on, you know, asking the patient, we can give you a, a quick summary, a snapshot yeah. of that patient, which will then make their, uh, you know, hospital operations much more smoother. Uh, it also helps in, in providing a better experience for the patient which then, you know, increases the patient satisfaction with that facility, which then, you know, in potential then play a role and also, in, you know, in, in improving their business operations. So th these aspects are really, in, you know, um, uh, playing a key role for enhancing the operations of the providers. Uh, uh, at the end, also all the stakeholders being, it, if, if it's the healthcare providers, if it's the payer, you know, we, we're all serving the, 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 the patient at the end. So anything that can help in, in providing a better patient experience you know, it definitely going to be benefiting the stakeholders indirectly. So thousands of healthcare providers, three million people, um, a journey that started years ago. Where are you at right now then? Uh, everyone's connected? Every record's connected? Where, where are you at in your, your journey and where do you go next? Yeah, so we have more than 1,400 healthcare facilities uh, already connected. Um, that gives us a market share of around 97%. Uh, of the market episodes, all the hospitals are already connected. Right. The big clinics and centers and the medium size. Now there are still uh, small clinics and centers that are in the process of completing their, uh, you know, uh, technical requirements to get connected with us. Yeah. And few pharmacies in Abu Dhabi are also completing the the technical readiness for them to connect to Menafi. So 2020 was a, a learning curve for for nearly every sector and every industry. What would you say were the biggest things you learned as an organization in 2020? And were there things that pass it forced you down where you actually think actually that made us better? Yeah, so, you know, one of the key aspects is, is planning. You know, when, um, when you have a, a, a solid plan, it helps you when, you know, whenever you need to execute. So having the, found, the, found, the foundation that we built based on a proper plan, it really paid off when, you know, when, when the pandemic started. Um, uh, another key aspect is collaboration. You know, we, we had all the stakeholders engaged from the beginning and that stakeholder management and engagement, you know, it enabled us to collaborate better, yeah. uh, to, you know, work together uh, and, and, you know, understanding our, you know, competing priorities, uh, but then to be able to fulfill, you know, um, uh, the, the needs of the sector. So those were like key lessons learned from us, you know, in terms of early stakeholder management and such a big platform, you know, when, when you're coordinating with different stakeholders, uh, you know, engaging them, uh, managing that change management plays a key role in ensuring that you have a, a smooth execution and then you start seeing the outcomes, uh, you know, of such a platform. You, you talk there about public and private sector collaboration. I mean, I've seen outside commentators say that the, the collaboration in the UEE between the private and the public sector has been unprecedented. And that's been one of, again, one of the secrets of their success while dealing with 
um, with coronavirus. How important has that been? Um, and how proud of you, are, you know, proud are you of both Malafi's role in that, but also how the public and private sector both stepped up to work together? I mean, that was extremely important. But if, if it wasn't for all the stakeholders really collaborating with us, you know, to, and, and they had competing priorities, you know, all healthcare providers, they had so many other demands, yeah. uh, you know, but they were always playing a key role with, you know, supporting the initiative. Uh, and that comes from their understanding of the importance of has, having such a platform, seeing really the value of, of data sharing. And, and this pandemic really showed that, you know, we, we are stronger together you know, in, in, in any response to any pandemic. So all the healthcare sector, you know, being, working together, understanding our own, you know, priorities, uh, played a key role. And, you know, I, I recall, for example, you know, that urgency that we were getting from the Department of Health. We were going to facilities that had various competing parts in terms of, you know, setting up uh, new uh, testing facilities, uh, you know, ramping up their resources, uh, you know, managing their uh, ER uh, departments. Uh, yet, you know, they had to also meet Malafi requirements, you know, working with, with, with our teams late at night to make sure that we meet the, that requirements. Uh, th- that was key for us, you know, for, for managing this pandemic. 97% connected. So within that, um, what's the kind of breakdown? Who is connected to you now then? So how many hospitals, how many clinics? How's that breakdown look like? So hospitals in Abu Dhabi, all of them are connected. Every single? Every single hospital in Abu Dhabi is already connected to Malafi. And then the big clinic and sect- centers, all of them are connected. We're talking about the small clinics and centers. Yeah. We're talking about maybe around 100 or 110 clinic and centers that are still not connected, uh, you know, due to interoperability challenges with their current system. So they're working on completing that integration requirements, and we're hoping to have them onboarded very, very soon. And we're talking about maybe around 450 or 500 uh, other pharmacies, the, yeah. you know, the standalone pharmacies that are completing their integration requirements. So that must be tremendously reassuring for patients when they go into hospitals and also must be incredibly useful for the staff working in those hospitals that w- whatever hospital they go to in Abu Dhabi, they're connected to your network. Definitely. Yeah, so f- for us, you know, we, we are looking at what additional data points that we can capture uh, you know, for the to 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 provide better insights for the healthcare providers. Mm-hmm. One of the key aspects are images. So today we're exchanging uh, radiology reports, okay. but you know many of the users have said, okay, can we exchange images so that I can put I can pull the CT scan or the X-ray that was done for that patient. So that will, will be one of the key priorities. The other aspect is driving better insights from the data that we have, and providing you know more actionable insights to the public health department who then can better, um, you know, serve the the healthcare sector in Abu Dhabi. And at the same time, to also provide insights and actionable insights to the care uh, givers. So today we're giving them that unified medical record in an easy to navigate way. But can we also provide them predictive insights uh, that, you know, can help them in their uh, support for that patient? So these are the key priorities for us, you know, capturing additional data points and additional value. And then from the, in terms of, you know, using AI and data analytics to provide more actionable insights for the different stakeholders. So I'm going to repeat something I read <coughs> the other day, which sounded, and I, it sounded clever, and I'm going to ask you how much you agree with this. Someone was said, talking about healthcare and healthcare tech, and they said that data now is as important as the surgeon's knife. Would you agree with that statement? I totally agree, because, you know, at the end, understanding the current and the previous condition of that patient is a key aspect in providing the right decision and the right care. Uh, today, data is easily available, but if it's not presented in an easy way for the for the healthcare provider you know, to understand it and really to action on it very, very quickly, uh, that data becomes useless. So having you know an HIE or having robust electronic medical record system it can really play a key role instead of, you know, going and looking through papers or, you know, notes. Uh, having data structured in a system uh, is really key in terms of providing, you know, um, actionable information that the caregiver can provide the right level of diagnosis and support for that patient. Atif, genuinely pleasure talking to you on AB Talks today. Same here. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Scott. Thank you.